I'm just going live just a little bit earlier. We got my moot coming in. How y'all doing? But I wanted to talk about uh Mamook. I'm gonna bring you in, in a second. I see you, brother. Um, but I wanted to say uh shout out to Navy Federal. I was just at Navy Federal. Yeah, I gotta switch some things up. So I appreciate the love at Navy Federal. I appreciate the young brothers that came up to me with the love and the respect. You know, you know, I love that positive energy, even though I was looking a little bit like. <laughs> you know, you got to got to be careful nowadays. But, you know, I, I, I appreciate the positive feedback and the respect. <clears throat> I also wanted to say shout out to Faison Love. I heard him on Vlad TV. You a real one, Faison. You know, Vlad brought my name up. And uh, of course, these guys read from the same script. He said, oh, I'm, 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 I'm friends with Charlemagne the guy. And then he say, he said, well, Kwame be going off on people. He be cursing people out. And then he asked him, Faison asked him, he said, well, what is he saying? He said, well, oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I ain't going to get into all that. That's just Charlemagne got to deal with that. And Faison said, well, what is he saying? He said, well, you're going to have to look it up. Because Faison said, I'm going to go look it up and see what he's saying. Because he must be saying something that's facts. Yes, he, Vlad. It's easy to see you, boy. <laughs> you don't even know me. You ain't never mentioned the old busty bus number one draft pick that made history that can inspire black children, whether you think he played well or not. Somebody out of a free lunch line that can show other kids that make it play better than me. You know, I understand you ain't connected to nothing, though. That's why you over here in this country talking black hip hop and black politics. Where you from, boy? You ain't talking about nothing about where you from, is you? Yeah. See, Faison, you a real one. I appreciate that. I respect that. Because uh, this boy here well protected. This Charlemagne the Queen, he well protected. But anyway, without further ado, we are gonna invite my moot. Uh, Muhammad Adu Rahif. I gotta let him say it on himself because you know I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I love I love the effort, big fella. <laughs> let me let me leave that to you. <laughs> Mahmoud Abdul Rau. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm talking about, man. So you you've been hearing me, uh, and I know the young fellas don't know who you are, and I don't like the comparisons, so. Uh, before we start, because I think every man's name should stand alone. Uh, and your name definitely is one of those names that should stand alone. So could you educate the young brothers on uh, kind of your background, where you're from? I'm from uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Uh, I ended up uh, raised by a single parent, my mother. Uh, went two years at LSU, uh, was fortunate to play uh, nine years in the league. After that, I went about seven years overseas. Uh, yeah, man, just, I mean, you know, came out of, came out of uh, poverty, uh, you know, misdiagnosed a large portion of my life, uh, ended up being diagnosed with Tourette syndrome uh, around 11th grade. So all up until that time, just uh, was told that I had habits and that's the, that's the misinformation that I used to give people. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, but pretty much, man, that's, I, I'm sure we're gonna get into to the meat of it as, as we yeah. begin to talk. But in a nutshell, that's 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 who I am. <laughs> yeah, and and see, you you kind of downplaying it because to me, uh, this go along get along gang that I describe, um, mm -hmm. people don't actually know what that really entails, and people don't actually know how deep, how low it goes, and how high it goes. Everything is being controlled by perception mm -hmm. and how the media make a person look and so uh whoever they want to make look good you remember what lyndon baines johnson said he said if we if you're going to get a leader we're going to give them to you mm -hmm. so the guys to me in my opinion 
that they don't bring to the light. Now I've been around you and I, I, I kind of go off of feeling. I like I tell people I'm Geechee. I got that third eye watching me. So I can tell energy. And the energy that you can bring to children, the way you still love this game, just look at the way you look at your age. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I've seen your work ethic. Mm-hmm. The way you can teach young males from that situation that you've come from, mm-hmm. to me, I mean, that that's priceless. Yeah. And guys like you and, and guys like Craig, Craig Hodges, to me, guys like you guys get buried. It's like we don't want individuals. So a lot of people give you Kaepernick comparisons. Mm -hmm. So can you speak about uh, what kind of stunted your career in the NBA and kind of why you're getting these Kaepernick comparisons? Oh, man. I mean, uh, you already know, but for the sake of uh, making it public, like I do so many other times, man, anytime, and I speak about this a lot, anytime in particular, a black man, uh, especially in positions of notoriety, of fame, of visibility. Uh, you, and, and I love the term to go along, get along. As long as you do that, you're safe. Yeah. But when you step outside of that box and you begin to display a certain conscience, right? And you begin to speak your conscience. And if it's outside of their politics, if outside of their agenda, then of course they label you. And so in a nutshell, this is this is when it all started. As long as I was in the league and there wasn't this threat, then I was safe. But when I began to challenge views and ideologies and debate on the bus and on the plane, you would hear you would see and I would do it sometimes intentionally. You would see if you're looking at the back of my head, anytime we were talking about foolishness, everything was cool. But when you start talking about religion and, and, and society and politics and all of these things in government, you see the heads doing this. Like, Here they go again. Here they go. And then you, you begin to see how things begin to shift. They start treating you differently and, and putting that uh, subtle pressure on you, trying to make you conform. But I, I made up my mind a long time ago, uh, and I say this all, all the time, I've been saying it for years, because you grow up and your environment has a way of molding and shaping you, the people you're around, the societies you're around. And if you keep hearing the same stories like, uh, well, you just got to play the game, right? You start growing up playing the game. And what happens, you end up being that person that you, you're not really living, you're just surviving. And I didn't want to survive, no, I wanted to live. And so I made, a, I made a conscious decision that, you know what, my goal in life from here on out, this many years ago, that I want to live and die with a free conscience and a free soul, regardless of what, pe- what people think. So there are always risks involved with that. And so as a result of that, this is what began to change the course of my career uh, in a nutshell. You know, they didn't like my politics. They didn't like yeah. what I stood for. And the same, like, even when you look at, this is just not a Muslim thing. When you look at uh, A.C. Green, A.C. Green may not have been so much political, but because he was wearing his Christianity on his, on his, on his chest, he was, like, viewed differently because he wasn't in that country club, you know, of ideas and behavior. So this is what did it and continues to do it. Mm-hmm. So so I talk about company policy. I say that's that's un-American. That's what's the mechanism that you're using to control people because they, they keep telling us that you got to look. They, 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 they know how to use words very well. They say it's a free country. You can say what you want, but it's company policy. But that company is operating in America. Mm-hmm. You cannot cut off people's rights we have rights to freedom of speech Mm -hmm. and what's going on now is that men and women are not having healthy dialogues is we better go along and get along what was whatever that's in the mainstream media we better agree with it or you're fired of course so what 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 do you think about that i I, I agree i agree with you i agree with you wholeheartedly Uh, and this has been the way it's been as they say, from time immemorial. Uh, people in, look, man, people in power, people in those positions, 
don't want their power threatened. Uh, you know, there's a there's a book, man, called uh, the, the, the White Architects of a Black Education. Mm. And they say in order to justify slavery and colonialism and imperialism and all of these things, the textbook was used as often as the bullet, <laughs> you know, because language is powerful. Ideologies are powerful. Before there's chemical warfare, biological warfare, chemical warfare, there's propaganda warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you can be crafty and sophisticated with the language, right, and you and you can convince people. And, and, and I say this all the time, man, when when the names are incorrect, the the language doesn't doesn't lead towards truth and the language don't lead towards truth. It's impossible to develop success. Right. So we have to begin to define things in its correct way. You speak about that a lot, you know, the, the, the value of words and and things of this nature but 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 uh it's it's been the that's been the way it's that's been it that's been their way since the beginning of time and we mm -hmm. have to become more adept at, at what words mean because mm -hmm. because your your words uh and your what you think influences your behavior your behavior mm -hmm. uh forms your character and mm -hmm. your character determines your fate but mm -hmm. if you're working if you're working from incorrect definitions, especially mm -hmm. about definition of who we are, what our culture is, you know, our, our sense of worth, then we're always susceptible to someone else's interpretation of who we are. And that's right. dangerous. You know, mm -hmm. Randall Robinson says something in his book. Uh, I think it was debt, what America owes to blacks or either it's quitting America. I can't remember the one. But he said never in, in the course of history have millions been deprived of everything except respiratory function, language, culture family, daughters, sons, religion, you name it, and still considered menaces to society, right? Mm. And so mm. that's just so much we have to cover. Uh, and, 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 and look, man, I'm going to just tell you, and I know this is not the conversation. I appreciate you. I appreciate your candor. I remember when we went to speak, we, uh, we were on the same team at Big Three. Yeah. I still wish you was on our team. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but when we went and sat at Joe Juice, Joe and Juice, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We over there, yeah, we sit down, man. I just, and I said this to somebody else. I said, I appreciate, man, his candor. He's genuine. He's articulate. He's intelligent. Not that that should be a surprise. <laughs> you know, it's something about when we're athletes, we get like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, look, man, yeah. we, he can we're talk. intelligent people. <laughs> yeah, we're intelligent. We read. We study. Yeah. Right? yeah. But, but so many times people put us in a box. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's nice to see, man, that you have this platform. And, and at the same time, after all of these years, 20, 20 something years of being attacked, the patience that you've displayed, right? Sitting back, trying to give people a pass, hoping they're okay. <laughs> I'm trying to give you a pass now, but you keep on doing this, the beast's going to come out. And it's just a matter of time when uh, uh, people are going to fight back. Yeah. And, and it's no fun when the rabbits got the gun. <laughs> right. And, and so that, that leads me to my next question. Like I'm, I'm taking a lot of heat. I mean, I've gotten so many phone calls about Charlemagne the God. I've gotten so many phone calls and my name is being wrapped up. And now all these different circles, TMZ is now talking about me. My family has come up on the breakfast club. You know, I've been the number one draft pick for 20 years and I've never made the breakfast club. I never was able to tell the other side of the story to inspire the kids. But the first time I'm on the breakfast club is to say that my father is a murderer and my brother is a murderer and all these things. Right. And I'm like, wow, like they're really doing what I said that they would do before I started this whole thing. Right. And they're doing it for the people to see. And then they're turning right back around and calling the people uh, just followers and uneducated. So like I, I, from a person who's had his life railroaded by this go along get along game and somebody who's now experiencing well i've experienced it 20 years ago but i'm experiencing it again yeah. um what do you say to people about the go along get along game and what can we do to circumvent this go along get along game it's all about exposure you know they have a platform and you mm -hmm. mentioned how uh, they know who to hire, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of these individuals, uh, in order to stay hired, you have to speak a certain way and you have to mm -hmm. speak about people in a certain way. And you mentioned a lot about how there's so much tearing down 
in particular of us. Yeah. Like mostly every facet of society, we're the ones who get it the most. Yeah. You know, and, and unfortunately, we oftentimes get it from our from from people that look like us. Look exactly like this. There's a just, but there's a justification that they try to justify by what well, this is just business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. this, this is what we're supposed to do. We ju we right? just talking about his game while saying he's so insignificant that don't even be mentioned in a trade. But that's just about right. basketball, <laughs> of, of course. And 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 it's bad business. Uh, they know it, but they try to justify it. Mm -hmm. So my thing is about exposure. So any chance that we have, because. They have this platform, and so millions of people watch them. So what you're doing by creating this platform for yourself and other people have to create platforms to where we have to hold them accountable. I mean, truly accountable. You know, we all, mm -hmm. let's hold them accountable. But I'm no, 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 no. It's time that when you, when you make a mistake or you do something intentional, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and you go out there and you start making this personal, it's not, mm -hmm. like you said, it's not about, Okay, this game, my skill, but you get my family involved, you calling me garbage, you, you know, all it's name calling, all of these negative epithets, then no, mm -hmm. I have a right to defend myself. And I right. have the right to expose you if what you're saying is false. Right. And even then, man, for me, for me, even if sometimes things are truthful, you know, as a Muslim, there's a concept called backbiting and slander. Mm -hmm. Backbiting is such that even if I know something about you and it's true. But I know that if I say it, it's going to hurt you tremendously or it's mm -hmm. going to have your family to look at you in a certain way. I'm yeah. prohibited from saying yeah. that publicly. Now, and and see, that's what confused you, not to cut you off. That's what confused me about Brother Jack. When I tried to reach out to him behind the scenes, he went on with the arrogance. You know, he went to texting on Instagram and went to talking. And even went so far to say my life is dirt. And then now he's giving these motivational speaks like I'm just some guy who's just attacking people. And I'm just like, you don't understand the way that you're talking to me, my brother? Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's right. all this and, and was about was respect. No, I, I get it. And when you lie, that's on a whole nother level. That's slander. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, for, for, for us, there's a saying, and I know within Christianity and I'm sure within Judaism, there's these same principles, but it said, look, speak out against justice, injustice, speak out against injustice, even if it's against yourself, your family, your near of kin. So if something is wrong, it's wrong, whether it's your Muslim brother who's doing it, whether it's somebody else who's doing it. And so we just have to get better. We have to be mm -hmm. smarter. We, ha we, can't, we can't play the game and, mm -hmm. and give these people what they want by constantly tearing ourselves down. And, and I love the fact that you keep mentioning the importance of, of being a benefit and influencing the youth. Yeah. And and by doing, by, by look, man, and you said this countless of times, and I'm not on social media a lot in terms of YouTube, but I've listened. And when, when you're constantly mentioning and tearing people down, but then you turn around, these children aren't stupid. Right. They may not necessarily communicate it, you know, or, 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 or articulate it, uh, uh, or, 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 or address it, but they're not stupid. So when you're on one platform and you're tearing athletes down and you're calling them names outside of the skill, and you're making it personal, talking about their character, then all of a sudden you go to the school and you want to talk about unity and you want to, man, that's, that's hypocritical. Right. And that's you the thing, like people to take you seriously. Right. And that's the thing, like Cam Newton, that, that thing with Cam Newton, where that young man challenged Cam Newton in the way that he did. When I grew up, every football coach would have slung that young man to the ground and made him do up downs and made him do something to earn the right to get back into that camp. Yeah. And so now they're calling that toxic. But you're raising these young men to be out of control. Yeah, and if you look at the, if you look at the streets, you're never supposed to come up to Cam Newton like that just because of what he represents. He's a black man. At one point, they wouldn't even let black men play quarterback. And right. So it's like these young kids are not connected to nothing. We all joking and playing and buying pretty shoes. But what, where is that connection that we used to have in your generation? And I know that in your generation, the so-called leaders, they were attacked. They were firebombed. They were thrown in prison. They had to leave. Uh, the leaders we have today, 
get to move into the whitest neighborhoods. They get to get flown to the protests. They get to walk through the jails and come out with their fist up. They cute, they pretty, they rich. That's right. I'm getting more flack. Your life has been railroaded harder than some of our leaders. What do you say to that? When it's all said and done, there's, there's, a, there's a, a certain leader that, that uh, I'm close to uh, back in the day. He, he said something to me that made sense. He said, when you hear yourself, especially by corporate elite, media, all of these people, when you hear these types of people saying good things about you, be concerned. Right. It's likely you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. When these same groups of people are attacking you, <laughs> you must be doing something right. Boy, they coming after me. <laughs> no, no, hey, and, and look, that that a lot of it is because why? You you are exposing, yeah. and they don't like it. The shoe is on the other foot now, and you mm -hmm. have a platform. People are listening to you, mm -hmm. and it's like I said before when I texted you a while back. Ain't no fun when the rabbits got. They had the gun for so long, <laughs> they've been hunting and they've been yeah. killing. So now yeah. the rabbits got the gun. Now they don't. They don't know how to act. Get yeah. real sensitive. And yeah. the best thing, look, the best thing a lot of them should have done. And I was talking to one of my brothers about this. Not too, matter of fact, I'm here in Mississippi now. We was talking prior to this conversation. The best thing they could have done, man, you know, is you mentioned this before, man. I called them. I try to talk to them like men. <laughs> the best thing, look, you know, if what you did was wrong, just apologize. It would have been done. <laughs> just apologize. Let it, let it be. But yet we want to justify it. We want to talk around it. And you yeah. put yourself more in the hole. Especially yeah. with a brother like yourself. Yeah. Because, look, I can tell by just listening to you. You know, you've done your research. <laughs> you took your notes. So you're just waiting for it. Like, really, you want to go there? <laughs> look, man, this can all, you said before, this can all be over. Yeah. If you just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> they won't listen. And, and still, we got this arrogance like we want to keep talking. Right. If you're really about building, if you're really about unity, mm -hmm. sometimes even that saying goes, let's let's agree to disagree as long yeah. as it's not rooted in my oppression. So okay, right. man, I look, you know what? I, I apologize. Let's how can we change this? How can we make this right? How can we, like you said, why don't we instead of buying all of these things and doing all of this, why don't we get together and build youth programs? Right. Why don't we teach these children not only how to read but how to think? Yes. How to be a critical thinker, how to problem solve. Yep. You know, if you're really about what you say you are. It's easy to do. Hypocritical. Let's right. do that. Yeah. And now it's like, y'all keep on. And the man said, it's quite simple. You leave me alone. This can all be over. Right. But see, now that, but see, now, but see, now they can't because it's, it's interrupting business now. Yep. They can't. You got people on YouTube now starting to actually believe that they can compete with the ESPNs of the world. I did it from from an iPhone eight. True, true, true. And, you know, you said something earlier about the Cam Newton thing, man. I think also the reason a lot of children come up the way they do and talk to these people mm -hmm. is the same thing you're talking about. When you're watching Sports Center and all of these these programs, and they're constantly tearing people down, that becomes the norm in people's mind. That's what I was thinking a fun about. Yep. Thing to, it becomes fun. Oh, yep. we just playing around. We having fun. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing fun, man, about lying. Yep. And about trying to tear somebody down. Mm -hmm. If anything, just say, "Hey, man, uh, you know he had a you know, uh, he had a terrible game tonight. We're human. We have those games." But you know as well as I do, controversy sells. And People want to hear that. Yeah, they want to hear you trash somebody in this country. Right. And and that's just bad business. At some point, we got to decide what's more important, man: making that cheese, making that money, or being mm -hmm. ethical, doing yeah. the right thing. You mm -hmm. get way more in life by being humble and doing the right thing than by doing the wrong thing. And it may right. seem like it's cool right now. It may seem like you benefit, but really, in the long run, you're gonna it, lose. It's more damaging to you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So look at what Craig, uh, Brother Craig Hodges said that Stephen A. Smith, because they keep saying that he just talks about basketball. But Craig Hodges said he was upset that they didn't interview him for the last dance. 
He said he talked to he said Stephen A. Smith went on TV and said, Oh, he just mad he broke and this and that, and he's just scruntle. You know, you talking about this man is a cute dog. He's supposed to love the bros. He's supposed to be all about black. He went on TV after I called him out wearing a black. See, they always virtue signal. You know, they 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 study us so they know that a white woman with hot sauce will make us say, Woo, she down with us. Mm -hmm. See, it's all about who we like. When they started this whole experiment with Instagram and Facebook, they unvalidate me by saying, oh, you don't have a blue check. I'm like, I don't need a blue check. I, I got my mama's cooking. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a dish? <laughs> like, are you serious? So we got the minds of these people <clears throat> all about who we like and don't like. Notice what they did with this election. Charlemagne the God, they went to a guy who's throwing bunkies all around the breakfast club showing little kids to rub lotion on the butt and having DJ Envy stick his finger in these little plastic butts on the breakfast club. Brings Donnell Rollins up there, throw bunkies at him while he's trying to talk about his intellectual property and his movie deals. So he won't even respect this brother. Turn the lights off on him when he started trying to talk about his stuff. They walked out. So this is what they do at the breakfast club. Wow. This is what we're putting on TV. Wow. And when somebody say, and you call that out, now you're aggressive, you're violent, you're all these things. Oh, of course, of course. They they're deflect, they want to deflect. Yeah. yeah. They're getting people used to dysfunction. Of course. Because if that was a woman sitting in that chair, that would be sexual assault. Right. But if it's a man, you can just push sex toys at him, and I guess, I don't know. And so this is the type of stuff we got to deal with as black men. We can't even get our products pushed. They they won't even take a black man serious. They let Joe Biden say, hey, you know, if you're not black, if you don't vote for me, Charlemagne the God didn't ask him any more questions. The, the president brought Cardi B on. Not somebody that's going to ask him questions back and forth, brought Cardi B, a rapper. Right. And she even said, I'm here because I got a large following. So it's all about who we like and who we follow. Yeah, of course. These people don't even give you a plan before they get elected. So what are we doing with this like and follow generation? Why are we not connected to the elders? And that's why, to me, people like you, people like Judge Joe Brown, uh, people like uh, Craig Hodges, I want to open up for you guys to come on my platform more because young people need to hear from you guys because you guys are a generation that was connected to something that they buried your voice very quickly yeah of course of course no that's powerful that's powerful uh you know it's 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 man this 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 is a long this is a this is a long process you mm -hmm. already know it uh there's so much damage that has been done mm -hmm. but at the same time we know that but yet we also have to begin to tell those stories like you said about the the great successes, because we have so many successes, we have so many geniuses, we have so many intellectuals uh, uh, among ourselves, but those are the stories you don't hear as much. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's we can't, like you gave the example of uh, at the Breakfast Club, all of those little things that they were doing. This is, uh, this is how, do, how do I say it? What, uh, this is a detriment, you know, to, to our, elevating ourselves you know what i mean uh elevating ourselves this this is definitely a detriment and we have to it goes back to what you said what do we do we have to begin to expose these things this buffoonery mm -hmm. right we have to expose it every chance we get like this doesn't benefit our race this doesn't add to our legacy you know uh, uh george washington carver said something he says no one has the right to come into this world then go out of it without leaving behind distinct and legitimate reasons for mm. having passed through. Mm. That ain't legitimate, <laughs> right? Those type of things. Mm -hmm. And we have to work on leaving a legacy worth leaving. Right. You know, not Frederick Douglass, knowledge doesn't befit a man to be a slave. Mm. When you begin to understand who you are, and what your worth is and your value, and you begin to, you talk about this a lot, walking like a man, being a man, it's when you become a man, you begin to hear these things. We, we hear it all the time. Uh, aggressive, violent. Yeah. Right? You know, and we have to change that narrative. 
and we have to cut because the media continues to use it. Yeah. Film industry continues continue to show us this way. Sports continue to relate us to being athletes and strong and not mm -hmm. intelligent and high mm -hmm. IQ. We mm -hmm. have to, every chance we get, if we're live, if we're on YouTube, if we're social, we have to destroy this language right. when it comes to us so that yeah. our young people can, can begin to start using the same language. And mm -hmm. as we use that language, we're going we're gonna to walk differently. Mm -hmm. We're going to navigate through life differently. Mm -hmm. Right. We, we, we're going to we're going to look to befriend certain people that's walking that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And at the same mm -hmm. time, those who aren't, we're going to try to bring you up. But mm -hmm. if you can't, there's a, there's a saying in Islam, lakum dina kum to you be mm -hmm. your way and to me be mine. <laughs> right. But I got to keep it moving. Right. Because we're trying to build something. We ain't trying yeah. to tear it down. Right. And, and, man, that's crazy, man. That, that that's beautiful. And. and I just wish we can get to the point where we all, can, like you said, uh, I don't know how to say that little phrase again. Say it one more time. Lakum dinu kum walia din to you be your way and to me be mine. I like that. To you be your way to me. Be <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's awesome, man. Because it, it just it seemed like we're pit against each other. We're taught to fight each other, and it seems like that's our only way out. It's like. Uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins said something to me that was startling. He said in his own interview, he said, uh, Kwame, he said, that I know they are mad. He said, he referenced they. He said, I know they are mad that Kwame uh, can't be controlled and he loves black people. He's for the black people and he's intelligent. And then he went on to say, I know they're really upset that there's no white man that can call him and get him in line. And I said, why? This guy's a doctor and he admitted that on YouTube? That's powerful. So how many guys, I asked him, I said, Doc, what's up, Doc? I said, how many guys you know? Because first of all, how you know the rules and the ropes? He know He's like the liaison that give me a message or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. He knows all the ropes and what's going to happen and what they'll do. And, and so I asked him, like, who, who are these people you're talking about? How many black people you know that's being controlled by this white man that can get him in line? He hadn't answered me yet. But is that what you uh, typically had to deal with when you were coming up? Oh, man, no question. You know, when you were talking, I was just thinking about scenarios. And, uh, 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 oh, shoot, there's another one that just came in my head, too. Uh, you know, when, when, when I didn't stand for the flag, Bernie Bickerstaff called me. I, I we playing Orlando that day. And I come to the gym, man, and Jim Gillen looks at me. He said, hey, Bernie wants to see you down the hall. I said, okay, no problem. So I go. I'm talking to uh, Bernie. said, the NBA called. They want to talk to you. Really, they want to convince you to, mm -hmm. to, to stand. To go so along, get along. Two guys. Exactly. And so the two guys on the phone, I don't, I can't, I can't remember their names, but they identified themselves as Jewish. And working for the NBA. Now, still to this day, I don't know if Adam Silver, because he's not a commissioner, if he was one of those people. But they mm -hmm. ended up talking to me and trying to convince me to stand. And I said, listen, man, I said, uh, do what you will, but uh, I'm not going to stand. And they gave me an example, like an example. Uh, uh, they're Jewish, and, and, and they gave me a Jewish example. Nothing wrong with that. But I said, well, you know, I appreciate it, but that doesn't apply to me. I said, so do what you got to do, and I do what I got to do. So they suspended me. But in a, and then even uh, when I was in Vancouver, uh, Dick Versace, Dick Versace called me up because prior to coming, you know, like, you talk about being a man a lot, right? And being mm -hmm. a man is, is, is hard, but it's, it's refreshing, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, the fact that you can go to sleep with a clean conscience. Right. You know, standing up to your position. So I, before right. going to uh, Vancouver, I said, listen, man, I don't want to come unless – if I get in the shape I'm supposed to be in, that you're going that you're going that you're going to play me, right? If I'm worth my weight in gold. So we had that agreement. Everybody had agreed that hey man, my mood is in he's gotten in shape. He's killing everybody in practice. This one Bibby was on the team, but they still wouldn't play me, but they wanted to put me on the injured list. So I said, "No, I'm not going on the injured list." So he calls me to the office. We have like a 40-minute conversation. So what ended that career was cuz I had a 2-year deal. The second year was their option. First year, of course, I'm, it's guaranteed. And what killed that deal was I challenged authority. 
because I said, I'm not getting on the list. So we had a 40 minute conversation and I ended up telling him in his face. I said, look, man, we had, we had a conversation before I got on, uh, came to this ball club. I said, I said, for me, it's bigger than basketball. I said, but I know my worth. I know what my level of skill can be or is. I said, all I asked you was if I, if I get to the point where I'm in shape and I'm producing, just play me. I'm not mm -hmm. coming back to sit on somebody's bench when I still have years left, but you mm -hmm. didn't do that. I said, your coaches, players have, 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 stated that Mahmoud is dominating practice. You put me in a couple of games that year, uh, I think against Steve Francis, I think it was 28 points in 26 minutes and one in DC, 21 minutes and 19, 21 points in 19 minutes. But yet I still can't get on the court, but you want me to go on the injury list. I said, uh, and I told him in his face, I said, look, you're not a man of your word, right? And you know, when you talk to presidents like that, that doesn't come off too good. They don't like when you when, when you're forceful and, and 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 you're for sure about yourself. And really, right. uh, Kwame, that's what that's what in terms of being in Vancouver, that's why they they didn't take that other deal, uh, that other year. Even though I was leading the team in scoring per minutes, everybody in the league during that year, even Jordan, mm -hmm. you know, points wow. per minute, they didn't bring me back. Uh, and then after that, of course, the HBO interview after nine eleven, you know, what I mean? it's like the excuse my language, this nigga won't shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? God dang. You know what I mean? He, he's going to speak his conscience. So yeah. that's one of the, and, but, but I, I, I told myself, I don't, like you say, I'm, I'm not going to be one of those go along to get along. Right. I've done that, I, I was taught that from an early age. And then when I began to read and study and look at people like Malcolm and Patrice Lumumba's and, all in Krumas and reading all of these history. I'm like, hold on, man. These people are the people now when we look at history, these are the people that we admire, we 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 look up to. Man, this is what I'm talking about. I want to be yeah. like that. I don't yeah. want to be known just being a play. I said, if my life, if all you remember of me is he could have a mean crossover and he can shoot basketball, I have a wasted life. Right, right. You know That's what, what I mean by these dudes not connected to nothing. And so let me, exactly. Let me ask you this. So um with the guys like Stephen A. Smith and, and all of the media, how they try to frame me is that I'm upset because I'm mad about being a bus and that that's the only reason why I'm making up the go along, get along game. So for the fans that identify with this word bus, that word has never been attached to you. So my whole thing was never about the go along, get along gang getting on you for being a bus or whatever, because it doesn't matter if you're a bus. It matters if you're an individual and you don't go along with their get along gang. You don't meet the criteria of a bus. So can you please make it understood for the casual fan that's listening to Stephen A and these news outlets that's identifying like what they're doing as just attacking players that are bad at the game? Because you definitely wasn't bad at the game. Uh, when, when you say, well, no, I, look, you weren't bad at the game. Right. But I, I, I just mean, want them to remove listen, me listen, from Listen, it. man, listen, any of us, this is a small group. What, 300 and something? I don't know the number. Mm -hmm. When you look at billions of people, not even, when you look at the amount of people, I think when I was coming up, it was like 700 and something to one that would make it to the NBA. Mm -hmm. Now, when you factor in the overseas market and everywhere else, it's probably well over a million to one. Mm -hmm. There's no way in hell, excuse my lane. No, don't no, no, give that, it to them no. <laughs> that 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 a person that makes it to the league. Now, you may not end up being or doing what you wanted to do, and there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of different uh variables. Yeah. When when people that's been in the league, and I was listening to you, I said, okay. This is his side. I don't know that side, but what he's saying, not knowing both sides, that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, the pressure that's put on players, you know, the whether it's the subtle racism. Uh, look, I've I've had players where Don Darnell me, he get he got injured, they rushed him through his 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 uh his uh, Rehab. rehabilitation mm -hmm. only to get him to have surgery when he got a rod in his leg. Mm -hmm. They put him on the court real quick, got rid of him. Yep. Right? They do that. Yep. A lot of stuff you was, I said, man, what he's talking about really happens. 
Yeah. And then Work me out three hours for the game. Away from, they'll take yeah. away from their mistakes and mm-hmm. their flaws and try to project it on somebody else. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, 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 what, what did you say? I'm, I'm, I lost my train of thought, man, because I'm, I'm emotional about this thing. This thing pisses me off. Take, take your time, because I know that's why. That's why we got to have you all here more. Like I said, I, we need to do a weekly thing where I got to have one, maybe two. We can have a Zoom call where we can get more people on. We got to reconnect the elders with the youth yeah, because it's time out for these young guys to look at a guy who make it to the one percent. When most of us are from the inner city, most of yeah. us come from single mothers either by force or by, you know, them making a decision. That's far from a bust. Exactly. And then you make it to that 1% and you have a young black boy that haven't accomplished nothing yet. Talk to Cam Newton like he talked to him. Talk yeah. to me like he talked to him. And like, it, it, it's crazy. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you think, because nobody won't answer this question and you are an articulate brother. Why was Stephen A. Smith going to colleges and high schools about a basketball player? Why what? Stephen A. Smith. He was going around on a world tour to colleges and high schools speaking about me, even 10 years into my career. Do you know why would he do something like that? Well, man, I can think of I can think of many reasons. Uh, uh, it, it could be that that. Uh, uh, he has something personal against you. That could be one reason. Uh, it could be that that he's got so, he gotten he's gotten so caught up in, in um, uh, what's the word you use? Uh, bringing down, destroying uh, black people. That mm-hmm. these things, talking about people in particular, especially when it's outside of basketball, has become the norm. Like sometimes mm-hmm. people do it for so long, it becomes so normal. They don't see a problem with it until mm-hmm. people like you begin to bark back. Mm-hmm. Then they get soft and sensitive. And then yeah. still, <laughs> instead of saying, I apologize, well, he's yeah. mad because. Yeah. He's mad because. And they right. don't want to admit that they're wrong. They you can never. Say, they got this God-like complex. Oh, uh, True. Dr. Bo- Dr. Dr. Boris Wagner said he only want 10% of us. There's a level of arrogance with that. Mm-hmm. You know, you keep doing that because you haven't been challenged. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't have that platform to be heard day in and day out like you. But mm-hmm. you're different. One, mm-hmm. you have visib- you, you have a name, right? You have visibility. And you went out there and you, you, you've created an audience. And see, they didn't expect this. And mm-hmm. so it's caught them by surprise <laughs> and their feelings are hurt. So now it's like, you know what, man, I can't let him win. And so that arrogance <laughs> and that pride keeps them going. Go get him, mama's cookie. They're saying, you know what, Kwame, you're absolutely correct. But right. but don't now apologize to Kwame and then go on the, the same night and you're going to do the same thing to somebody else. See, right. you didn't mean what you said. Right. Because they're attacking Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. They seem to be <laughs> these two brothers on the news cycle every day. And then I started watching uh, Kyrie Irving and some of the things he said in the interviews. And he's talking something bigger than basketball. And that's one thing you can't do while playing. He wore a hat that said uh, Fathers Matter on several occasions in, in, in post-game. They don't want to hear stuff like that. They, they don't. Yeah, LeVar Ball. They made him seem crazy. Um, they don't dig into the women that come in and bring these kids that, you know, LeVar Ball to me is very important. He took the heat for his son. So they don't have to say anything. You right. can't approach them any kind of way because the daddy coming and he yeah. coming aggressive. He coming bold and he says, yeah. stay in your lane and you can yeah. call me whatever. But my son is going to be covered. Yeah. And, and people don't really understand the importance of that. Yeah, we, 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 we need that type of strength more. And unfortunately, a lot of our men have been emasculated. Mm-hmm. You know, they've grown feminine, they've grown soft, mm-hmm. and we've to grow along, get along. We've just we've succumbed to just playing the game, mm-hmm. as opposed to you know what, man, I'm gonna live in down principles, mm-hmm. whether you like it or not. Right, right, and uh, and we need more of it. Of course, you know, man, it's not gonna happen overnight. Man, <laughs> right, and, right. And most of us, unfortunately. I think most of us aren't going to get it. 
But what yeah. we do is we we continue to work on those or we work with those who got it mm -hmm. and we build with each other. And along the way, when they see this building process, a lot of them will come on in because they because some of them are not going to be there in the, in the initial stages. Some mm -hmm. don't see it. And so, oh, I want to be OK. No problem. I, you weren't here in the beginning, but I see you trying to make a difference. Come on in. We're we going to bring you in. Right. But we're going to have to work on ourselves and work on attaching ourselves to people that uh, that share our ideology and, mm -hmm. and our goals. Mm -hmm. And then from there, stragglers will come along. And at the same time, too, they're going to be people. Let's just face it. They're going to die ignorant. Right. Die not unifying. Mm -hmm. And our heart goes out, but we can't spend too much time on them. That's just a hard reality. Right. We got to work with those who are willing to work with us and whoever comes along, along the way, fine. Exactly. Those people, if you want to stay in that state of ignorance, mm -hmm. right, then to you be your way, it, to me be mine. Exactly. That's good. Hey, look, I'm going to use that now. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to you be your way, to me be mine. Too, we all using somebody's stuff. Exactly. It, it's supposed to be flattering. I appreciate that. I'm going to add that. That's, that is nice. And uh, like I say, I'm, I'm in the process of building the studio. And so I, I want to have it to where I can bring some elders together, whether it be in person or either, you know, over Zoom. But I want to make it where it can be in person, where players can come and just talk and share stories and just show these young kids. Because now it, it, to me, these kids are getting so watered down because they're skipping so many steps and just watching uh, this game now that's, that's been watered down so much to become a product. They don't understand the value in a pick. They don't understand the value of a Matumbo getting the ball and giving it to a Mamu. They don't understand nothing about the fundamentals and what's the purpose of the game. They think it's about running around, step back, shooting a couple threes, and whoever got the most points is the greatest player ever, and whoever else is like Michael Curry. Because Michael Curry, if they change the rules and, and put him back in the game with some of these young players, the way he can play defense like he know how to play, they wouldn't even be able to step on the court. And I think man, that's why they made it the way they made it now. Man, you said something powerful. And I, I use that phrase a lot. You say a lot of us are missing steps. Yeah. You know, and man, there's a book called Chop Wood, Carry Water, Falling mm -hmm. in Love with the Process of Becoming Great. Mm -hmm. And they talk, they give a lot of examples. But we have we have lost sight of that, man. We we live in a society where it's fast food, fast information, and we think success comes fast. Mm -hmm. We don't understand that there's a process, man, to becoming yeah. knowledgeable. There's a process to developing wisdom. There's a process to becoming educated. There's a process to becoming successful. And you can't skip steps. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be sustained when you skip steps, mm -hmm. right? And this book is phenomenal. I, I give it to a lot of agents. I give it to a lot of athletes, man. Even CEOs have read this book and say, wow. And it's mm -hmm. simple stuff that we know, but we just lose sight because things are just coming at us in all different directions and mm -hmm. we're just moving too fast and we're right. not taking the time to sit back. Hold on, man. Let me develop the skill. Mm -hmm. Let me develop the expertise. And I know anytime I do that, it's going to take time, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's going to all add up. Right. And then it's going to be, it's going to be solid. It's going to be strong. And I'm going to be able to sustain it for long periods of time, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, you're right. Look, man, I've said this to you, I think, before. You got me. You got my number. Anytime, if you do that, as long as I'm living and able, and if I feel I got something to say, man, look, you can call me anytime. Man, I'm definitely good. All right, now I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> now, look, that's why, look, that's why I'm saying it yeah. publicly. Right? Okay. So you can hold me to it. All right. Because, see, I, I love information. I don't mm -hmm. like just to talk. Really, I like listening more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I love listening to what people have. That's why I read so much. Because mm -hmm. reading, you're listening, you're, you're processing what people are saying. Mm -hmm. And and that's what it's about, being able to listen and engage. Mm -hmm. And and you take those nuggets mm -hmm. and you begin to slowly try to apply them. Because so much damage has been done to this. This is not going to happen overnight. You're going to have your ebbs and flows. Yep. When you're moving, oh, you're slipping. Yeah. But we need to be having this, this network of people mm -hmm. holds us accountable. Well, we exactly. Call, like you call Judge Brown and you call these people that you talk to. And mm -hmm. I have my network say, hey, man, I got a question. Hey, man, I'm thinking about this. So what do you think? 
those mm -hmm. things are like you said you used the word earlier priceless yes and having and throwing it out there because when mm -hmm. i throw it out there i threw it out there because i want you to hold me accountable right right remember what you said right <laughs> like you said you said this a while back you said boy something about videos yeah you something said, about the video. Yeah, something about those videos. You, you said you said this. Well, I got you on video. Yeah. Where from? Yeah. Yeah. And so, man, that's and that's what this is about. Like, I, like I said, I go off energy. And so, once I do get these programs in place, I see you as a guy that can come in and do. You, you're not just a guy who can teach a kid what I can't, which is shoot free throw. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Oh. No, you, can, you can shoot. You, you, matter of fact, you were shooting good with your left hand. Yeah, in practice. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, on the serious side, like uh, these kids can resonate with a guy who's still young enough that look like them can still go out there and shoot. You, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, these guys don't understand how your preparation is before a game and how you just hit that switch and turn into somebody else. You're not the guy that's sitting back smiling no more yeah. when the lights come on. So, yeah. and and for, for you to be able to teach that to these kids, it will be, and you're, the, you, you know what I'm saying? They think you're a little guy. You're not a little guy compared to these kids. You know what I mean? Right. But you're, you're kind of more their size. So I think seeing a guy like you, seeing what you've gone through, seeing that you're still strong, these kids need to see something like that. So, with any programs that I get going, I would love to call you and have you be able to come down and speak, have you come down and work some camps. I got to connect. And if you got anybody else that you got in mind, we got to reconnect the youth with the old school guys because you guys are the fundamentals. You guys were the reason why we're able to play the way that we're playing now. Uh, well, not the way we're playing now. They made it a business. But before, you know, you guys paid the way for us. So it's, it's about time. Somebody give you guys your flowers while y'all are here. So that'll be this platform. And 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 likewise, man. It's it's always uh you know, even when you're dealing with people younger than you, just because a person is older, and I appreciate that, but it's always give and take. Mm -hmm. you know, we also have to listen to those who are younger than us. Just because we're older doesn't guarantee that we know everything. Right, we right. Always learn. Right. You know, and, and that's and that's sometimes a flaw with us when we get older. It's like, what can you tell me? You can't tell. No, man, you man, can, you can you can learn from man. anybody, man, even yeah. though not to. Yeah. Do, yeah. But you can learn from anybody. And I'm yeah. always observing. I don't just observe and talk to older people because when I was young, I surrounded myself around older men and older women. I would just sit mm -hmm. and listen. Me that too. was the time when you just couldn't blurt anything out. You, you got to head to Yeah. And if they call on you, you you talk. If not, you just sit there and listen and absorb. Yeah. And yeah, but but those look, man, but I but I also I look and I watch young people, not just on the court, but I listen to them. I watch their body language. Yeah. And then I'm always trying to, you know, engage them in questions. Like, yeah. About 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 because I want to hear and I want them to feel like, man, you really concerned about what I think. Right. It's right. genuine. It right. ain't just me talking to you. No, right. I want you to get to the point where I want you to know that I care about what you think. Yeah. And I want you to know too that sometimes I'm gonna disagree with you. Right. But it's how man, I disagree man, with you. you better it's say how it. I disagree say. with you that's gonna be like, man, you know what? Okay, that, that that felt uncomfortable, but there was no arrogance in it. Right. And you sit with that discomfort. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then you come out of it like, you know what, man? Having somebody disagree with you ain't all. Wow. Okay. I, I don't. I'm not so sensitive now. Right. And then you're able to hear a feedback. So, oh, okay. Uh, okay. I I can see where my thinking wasn't correct. Right. Or you can find out. Sometimes we as adults got to say, you know what, young fella? You put something on my mind just then. I ain't even think about it. Yeah. Like really? Right. So there's always that given. Sometimes we got too much pride and we right. let somebody know that's younger than us that, you know, you just taught me something. Right. You influenced me. I right. appreciate that. Yeah. Because that's going to motivate them later. Like, wow, I got a voice. Right. I have right. something to say. Mm -hmm. See, because we're a lot of times we were like, you know what I mean? For us, sometimes, it, hey, you better not say you nothing. <laughs> So sometimes you're like, you know, you don't even know you want to talk no more. 
<laughs> you're like, oh, shoot. But, no, that's, man, look, look, Kwame, I think those are valuable, valuable tools to learn, man, and, and to convey. And I'm here, man. I'm here. Yeah. I'm always looking to learn. And, and what if I can, and if it resonates, it resonates. But see, what you just displayed as an elder, that you didn't have to be this humble. And so that's the type of elder that can reach these kids. These kids know that they're smart. They've been given so much technology. They're just misguided. They just got a little bit of a temper. You got to be subtle with them. So your temperament and the way that you relate to them first, and you try to induce things out of them. You get them to talking first instead of just a lot of elders try to tell young people what to do and put things in their head. And they're like, wait a minute. I know what I want to say. I know how to articulate myself. Stop telling me what it is, how I feel, and let me explain it to you. And that's yeah, what they're doing in the media. Instead of no one's talked to me, but everyone said everything about my mental state, about why I'm mad, about how I'm a bust. And they do that to these children. When they reach a certain level, when they're adults or whatever, you get a job, you talk down and you talk at people. And I think yeah. these younger guys are picking up on that very well. So we gotta we gotta get the right type of elders like yourself around these young kids. And I think it'll unlock their mind. So we definitely got to we, we definitely got to do this again. Uh, I love to, man. I love to. I, I know they're upset right now that they woke the they, they I know they're wishing right now they would have kept kept you asleep, but they woke up a sleeping giant. <laughs> <laughs> but I look, man, there's so many people out there. Uh, and and, I, and I'm, I know you know this already. And I know you're not looking for the kudos, mm -hmm. but because because you're on a mission and for you, it's just about being factual and truthful. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of people out there, man, that really love what you're doing mm -hmm. and appreciate your candor, your genuineness, and, and, and your being organic and raw. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're not perfect, but we strive mm -hmm. to be perfect. A absolutely. So just, hey, man, just keep using this platform, man, to educate. Yeah. And I love the fact you keep bringing it back to the youth. You keep bringing mm -hmm. it back to unity. You keep bringing it back to building. And that's what we need to hear more of, man. So, my hat goes off to you, man. And I and I told him, I said, look, man, I said, I was I was in the big three. I said, don't, I said, I'm not surprised. I said, because so many times y'all take a man's silence as a weakness. I said, I've seen him about to go at Gary. <laughs> and I've seen him like, 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 you know, holding in, like, all right. You know, like you're not saying it, but in your mind, you're like, you know, you know, I'm trying to give you a pass. You know, you know, you, you know, you're like scratching your head, like, I'm like, like whoa, whoa, what's my safe word? It comes out, it says, hold on, what's wrong with you? What you mean, what's wrong with me, man? You, you know, you kept on pushing this button. So I said, look, don't, look, don't play him weak. <laughs> Tell, tell everybody how to get in contact with you on your social media if you got any uh and let everybody know that you that you cool with because i got respect for you if they got any products they want to promote if they got if you got any products you want to promote just shoot me a text we can promote it on my site i won't charge nothing oh man i appreciate yeah. you but no they can yeah. just reach me on uh instagram man uh mahmoud m-a-h-m-o-u-d-a-r-1-2-3 okay yeah, and, and, and you got any Facebook or anything like that? Yeah, I'm Facebook, uh, but shoot, they got so many god dog people. You know how people, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know the one they're gonna get, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the one, yeah. okay. Tell and them one I, more time it's the Instagram. Yeah, what is it? Right away, but I'm uh -huh. always trying to respond to people, man, and show love. Uh -huh. So, yeah, tell them your Instagram one more time again. M A H M O U D A R one two three Mahmoud A R one two three. All right, y'all go support this brother. I know you know everybody. All the younger cats, I think everybody know of you because of the, of course the comparison with Steph Curry. So right. I think you gonna get a, a lot of young cats asking you a lot of questions. So I hope they go and flood you and get some of that with. <laughs> yeah, man. But much love always, man. Yes, sir. And, I, and, I, and I thank you for bringing me on, man. Man, thanks for coming, man. I, hey, look, I'm gonna shoot you a little text, man. We gotta do this again. Let's do it. Yes, sir. I I'm appreciate hold it. You, to it. Uh, you got me. You got me. You got <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, baby. Okay. Yes, sir.
Man, that's my that's my guy. Man, I hope I hope y'all enjoyed it, man. Um, I told you this go along get along thing is bigger than me. Um, it's not about me. Um, we're gonna connect these youth. The youth are failing, and I think it's because us adults are failing. We're fighting, and we're searching for the next uh, wave to ride, and we're losing our children. So um, I, I just want to be uh, an olive branch because a lot of the things that I know, if you heard what Brother Mahmoud said, he used to sit and observe the elders. He watched his mother. He watched older people, men and women. <clears throat> and that's how we learn. Um, and so that's what I did when I was young. So we must connect these children back to the elders. Um, we got social media raising our children. We have video games raising our children. We have celebrities raising our children. Um, and, that, and that's that's a, a recipe for disaster. And you can see it playing out in the streets. So if you like what's going on now, I don't know why would you, but uh, I think it's time we change and we start being more united. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't appreciate the fact that people keep saying, "Oh, he's going at certain black people." Well, the black people that I'm going at play it to a lesser charge, and the black people that I'm going at keep going at other black people like Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, and they go at everybody black. So the black people that's going at black people, I already said. I go after the go along, get along game. I don't go after people that don't go after people. And all of the people that I mentioned, mentioned me. So I wish you guys uh, peace and blessings. I have to go enjoy my family. They told me if I make another video without taking them to dinner, they're going to swing on me. So uh, <laughs> I got to go be a daddy. I got to go to dinner. And I got to go play Connect Four and video games and whatever else they want to do. So y'all uh, y'all have a blessed day. I might can jump back on late, late tonight. I might, maybe, I'll try. Because I guess I try mean that's integrity. But I'm trying mean I might not. Okay? I might not be able to get back on later. It depends on if I'm sleepy or not. Okay? But y'all make sure y'all go support that brother Mahmoud. He has a beautiful spirit. He's always been a humble, respectful, but don't take humbleness. I, I, they love to throw that humble word on black men. No, he'll tell you like it is. You don't care how tall he is. He's going to tell you he walk. You can tell his strength and his presence when he walk in the room. Ain't the biggest guy, but you can tell he a man. So that's what we got to get young men back to. You don't got to step on someone's toes to show you a man. You can just do it with your presence and your aura and the way that you the way that you move and carry yourself. So you guys have a blessed day and uh, I'll try to get back on track, but I might just have to be a daddy the rest of the day and night. So y'all have a blessed one. Appreciate y'all watching.